Hello everyone, in this video we will see a real life use case of error handling in flow designer. So we will be discussing when an error occurs in your flow, what are the steps you should do. It may vary according to your requirement or maybe according to your organization's policies. But this is a generic error handling use case which I have built. So for example, if an error occurs that no record was found while the flow was trying to search that and if you don't have the error handling flow, it will just error out and the request will keep hanging in there and the requested item or the request of the catalog will be just there forever and nobody will be taking an action on that and when the end user comes back maybe after a week or two and he will see that there has been no update on his request so that's waste of time for the end user and then for the developer as well who weren't informed on time so for these reasons you need error handling in your flow designers and it's an essential part of the flows which you are building and every flow should always have some error handling mechanism Welcome to my YouTube channel and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button. So this is the use case which we will be doing. So we need to handle all type of errors that may occur in the flow. If you have seen my past videos on error handling where I have covered the basics of error handling. This error handling section of flow is like a try and catch. If any kind of error happens in the flow, it will automatically come into the error handling section of the flow designer. So you don't have to worry about calling that error handling section on your own. And if you haven't checked out that video, please click on the top right corner or the link will be provided in the description as well. Then we will build a subflow that will trigger when the flow errors out. So we will be building a subflow which will be called in the error handling section and if you want to learn more about subflows as well the link will be in the description or you can click on the top right corner and then finally in the subflow we will be closing that rhythm so that everyone is aware including the end users or if they have raised that request for somebody else they would be aware that the request has been closed due to some error or we will update that actually in the work notes and we will raise an incident for maybe the service desk team who will be redirecting that ticket to the technical team of service now or whosoever is taking care of that catalog item. So basically this will be our use case. Any error occurred in the flow, we will be calling the error handling section which is a step two. We will be closing the rhythm, we will be raising an incident. So this is a simple use case which we will be developing now in service now. So let's jump to service now. I'm in my service now and I am in the flow designer homepage. And if you see, I have already built a flow called error in the flow. So I have introduced an error in this flow. So how I have introduced that, I'll just quickly show you that. So the trigger is the catalog. And then I'm trying to create a catalog task which has the short description of this is a test task for error handling and the assignment group is service desk. So this is just a basic catalog task. And then I'm trying to look up for a record in the user table where the first name is Hulk. So I know that this user doesn't exist in the user table of my service now instance. So it will throw an error that no record was found. So I have introduced an error here and that's about this flow if you see we have the error handler section and we will have our subflow here so before that we will have to create our subflow i'll click on this plus sign and then click on subflow and maybe i can write generic error handling subflow and then i will click on submit now i will have to provide the input to this error handling subflow which would be the RITM number of the flow. So what I will do is I will create an input here and maybe I can say RITM and the type would be reference. And then I have to give the table name. So SC underscore REQ underscore item. And I will make it mandatory. We don't need any outputs because no outputs are required in this use case 
but again it depends on your requirement if you need any please go ahead and create those and then I will add an action here to close the RITM for that I will go ahead and update the record so I will select this update record and then I will drag and drop this record from here and then I have to set the fields here so I will add the field value and maybe I will select the state as closed incomplete because it errored out or maybe you can select close skip or if you have any other state which you have defined for your organization and maybe I will add a work note here that an error occurred in the flow please connect with service desk okay and after this I'll click on done and I will raise an incident ticket so for that in the action I will select create record and I will select incident here and I will give some basic values so for example I will give the caller ID as the person who had submitted that RITM so I will go into RITM I will expand that and search for open by and I will drag and drop this and then maybe I can give a short description there was an error while running the flow on and then I will give here the RITM number so for that I will again go to the inputs and then I will search for number and drag and drop the number so it will display the RITM number in the short description so that the developer or the service desk person can actually go into the RITM and see what kind of error it was and then finally I will add assignment group here as service desk I will go ahead and publish this and this is a very generic subflow which I have written you can actually customize it on your own requirements for example if you want to create an incident before the RITM and then you can mention the incident number in the RITM record as well so that the end user knows actually there, there was an incident raised for this request or maybe if someone comes to audit they know that there was an incident raised because there was an error in the flow and this is the incident number so it depends on your requirement I will go into the flow again I will activate this error handler and I will add a subflow and I will click on subflow here and I will search for my subflow called generic error handling and just click here activate it and now this flow designer would be activated in my system okay so it threw an error that input is mandatory because we had mentioned that in the subflow so I'll just quickly go here into the subflow and I will give the RITM here and then I will click on activate again now the flow has been activated I will go on to one of the catalog items where I have used this flow so I will go into maintain items and here you would see error handling catalog item which is using the flow error in the flow and it doesn't have any variables or anything so it's just a plain catalog item with no variables UI policies client scripts or anything and under the process engine you would see we are calling this flow so I will go ahead and click on try it and I will raise a new catalog request so I will click on order now and if I click on this request and go into the RITM I will click on this you would see it. the state has already changed to close incomplete because the flow ran and you would see the work notes have been updated as an error occurred in the flow please connect with the service desk which we updated in the flow and if I click on flow context you would see how this flow was running so here you would see completed and error caught so this flow has been completed if you wouldn't have handled that error it would show the status of this flow as error so this is a good practice to add the error handling section and if you scroll down you would see this error handler section and you can open the context of this subflow as well and if we go here into the create record you would see the incident number 
so this is the incident which was created we will just quickly go and search for this incident as well so i will paste the incident number here okay and now you would see the caller is system administrator because that was the user who raised it and this is the assignment group called service desk and you would see the short description as there was an error while running the flow on and here is the RITM number which we had mentioned and the most beautiful part is we were able to handle this flow in a graceful way so that if any error ever happens on that flow it will never throw an error it will just say completed and error caught so that's the best part of error handling and I would highly recommend everyone to have error handling section in your all of the flows and this is an example which you can put in all of your flows is just a simple subflow and if you don't have any strategy or anything as of now in your organization just go ahead and have this kind of error handling subflow which will help your organization to handle your errors in a better way please let me know in comments if you have any other ideas of error handling or you think this can be done in a better way i would really love to hear from you and if you like this video and you learn something new please click on the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching the video